Hey there, Postal here. So I was going to be posting a video uh, today on Charlotte von Stoffen, uh, one of the female pilots that is currently available in the premium shop. However, I will post that tomorrow because uh, some news came out today in regards to a free premium plane and how to earn it. Let's take a quick, quick look. So what is the plane that's available? It's going to be the Skua Mark 1. Uh, we're taking a look right now at the Skua Mark 2, which is the plane that's available in game. The Skua Mark 1 is going to be part of the Start Your Engines, uh, which is what they call all their um, grinds basically for free premium planes. It is, at least on paper, seems very similar to the Mark 2 that's available. Um, it is tier 3 British multi-role fighter. The event is starting, if you're watching this video on the day I post it, the event starts uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, August 17th, and goes through the end of the month, uh, so for two weeks. Not very difficult missions, I'm glad to say. So let's take a quick look at the missions first, and then we're going to take a look at the actual plane stats, which, you know, aren't a full picture, but that's all we can look at right now. So first and foremost... Like any of the missions for World of Warplanes, you can purchase tokens and skip the missions. Uh, but I'd... Well, let's just look at the missions themselves. They can only be completed Tier 4 and above aircraft. There's only 10 missions, which is great. It's a Tier 3 plane, so I wouldn't expect there to be like the plethora of missions that there were for Tier 7, uh, 8, and especially the Tier 9 planes that we were able to, to earn. Mission 1, destroy 5 aerial targets in any number of battles. That's any aerial targets... So that's air defense aircraft, that's other enemy fighters, um, or I mean, excuse me, any other enemy planes. So five is five, it's not a big deal, I would like to think. Um, you get a day of premium time with that. Mission number two, receive a Rocketeer rank. Uh, so this can be a little bit more difficult, right? Um, air to air... Um, Air-to-air -air rockets are only available on four different planes, and they're all tier eight and above. Uh, so there are obviously rockets available on a lot of different planes, uh, air-to-ground rockets. They're a little bit harder to hit, um, but if you don't have the BVP-210, the BVP-212, the BVP-215, or the F-94D, then your best bet is going to be something uh, at the lower tiers with, with air-to-ground rockets and attempt to get a uh, rocketeer that way. Really easy way, easy-ish way to get a rocketeer. If you're in like a heavy fighter, like a mosquito or something along those lines, you can fire your rockets at um, at a bombing run. Those bombers are just going in a straight line, so it's easy to get those uh, bomb those rockets on target. Almost forgot the uh, ME262 and the 262HG2 have air-to-air -air rockets as well. Uh, but again, that's tier eight and tier nine. So in lower tier, it might be easier to go for um, for bombing runs. Although there are planes like the Skua, for instance or the I-1629 uh, that have air-to-ground rockets that actually do relatively well air-to-air. -air. Mission number three, oh, you get some, some airframe parts. Mission number three, earn 500 capture points in any number of battles. Um, I'd like to think that this is both on attacking and defending. I mean, 500 capture points is not the end of the world kind of thing. Uh, and uh, I should, I personally can get that done in one battle. Um, but, but even if you can't get 500 in one battle, it's not going to take a, a ton of battles to get that completed. And you get some period one um, experimental optical sight. Wow, experimental. Nice. That's actually really going to be quite good. Mission four, to deal 5,000 damage to aerial targets in any number of battles. A higher tier plane is going to get it done quicker, right? High tier heavy fighters are just are going to get 5,000 damage uh, relatively easily. Um, but 5,000 damage to aerial targets in any number of battles, that's nice, it's any number of battles. So even if you're at low tier and you're only getting 500 damage a battle, um, you know, you're still going to be able to get it taken care of. You do get a standard supply crate out of this. Mission number four. Mission number five, place among the top three in your team by personal points earned. 
Just get top three personal points. So keep in mind it's not based on the chevrons. If you've ever been in the position of having somebody else have four chevrons, but you have three chevrons, and they've got less personal points, but you've got more, so they get a higher rank. That's not what this is. It's just strictly personal points. Get the most personal points you can get, and you will earn yourself a... Um, uh, bonus as well so you get the procurement uh, system improvement for extra credits mission number six destroy five air defense aircraft in any number of battles that's nice again this any number of battles um, just attack those air defense aircraft gonna be good in, in literally any plane any fighter multi-role fighter or um, a heavy fighter will, will be able to get that done relatively easily and you get some more parts mission number seven I do like that all these seem to be in any number of battles uh, so far, anyway, destroy eight multi-role fighters. You get some uh, some consumables, it looks like. And multi-role fighters are the most abundant fighter type, uh, tier four and above. There's usually at least three, if not four, per team. And anyway, if you can attack them after a, a respawn, uh, you might be able to get this taken care of in one battle. Mission number eight, earn 20,000 personal points in any number of battles. Um, and you get yourself a, another premium consumable. 20,000, again, it's in any number of battles, so I know there's going to be people out there that can do this in one battle, uh, and then there's going to be people that's going to take a handful of battles. It doesn't matter. It's any number of battles, so that's fine. Mission number nine, destroy four enemy aircraft while defending sectors in a single battle. So this one will be a little bit trickier, although it's only four um, defense um, kills. So this you have to literally kill the enemy that's attacking your sector while they're in the sector. You can't just be like attacking it, but outside the sector. You need to make sure that they're inside that ring, and that'll count as defense as a defense kill. Four enemy aircraft while defending is not a, a stretch. Um, it might take a little bit of time for those that are not used to that process, but uh, it's not an overly difficult mission. Fighter is typically the best option for this, but um, if you're more comfortable in a multi-role or a heavy fighter, you can do that as well. You do get a supply crate out of the deal too. All right, so the last mission is uh, mission 10. Uh, receive a Conqueror Achievement. Conqueror Achievement is earn 450 capture points in a battle. Um, doesn't need to be attacking, doesn't need to be defending, as far as I recall. Um, and But it's 450 capture points. That will earn you the Blackburn Skua Mark I and Hangar Slot, a trained crew, which it's a premium plane, so you'll just trade out that crew for somebody else anyway. And a paint set, which I'll be uh, excited to look at. So when we look at the Skua Mark II, technically, which is the plane that's available in-game, uh, what's kind of funny is if you look at the upgrades here, the airframe shows a Skua Mark I. So it's just got a shorter engine hub on it, and you get less points. Uh, that being said, I suspect there's going to be bigger differences than just that on the premium plane. I'm actually pretty darn excited about this because I really, really like this plane. I love the Tier 3 Skua uh, that's available in the tech line. It's really fun plane, got great maneuverability. It's kind of like, um, it reminds me of a German ground attacker. It's got a huge bomb on it, reasonably strong forward firing guns, okay rear gun. Um, terrible altitude performance. But, you know, it's a tier 3 multi-role fighter. What do you want? Um, it's just a fun plane. Is it a good plane? I mean, that's argumentative. But it's a fun plane. And so I'm, I'm actually pretty excited about this premium plane and, you know, what it's going to bring to the table. So taking a quick look at the overall just comparison, um, it's pretty mixed bag. We'll take a, a deeper look in just a second here. But... You know, the gun armament's showing slightly weaker, the bombs and rockets are slightly weaker, and you notice uh, the Tech Tree version has a 500-pound bomb. The um, Premium has four 80-pound bombs, if I remember correctly. Uh, maybe it's eight 20-pound bombs. I don't remember. We'll take a quick look. Survivability is slightly better with the Tech Line 1. You've got 30 extra hit points, which makes sense. You're the Mark 1 in the Premium plane. Um, your top speed's better in the Tech Tree version. Um, however, the maximum dive speed is the same. Maneuverability is slightly better in the Tech Tree version. You get a better um, turn time. 
and the same rate of roll. Optimum airspeed, however, is better in the premium plane, but barely. Uh, the altitude performance is better in the premium plane. However, the rate of climb is worse, so I don't know. I kind of suspect, expect that to mean uh, that it'll kind of even out. So let's take a quick look at, you know, what what are we looking at here? Well, you've got the weaker engine, of course. You've got four 303 machine guns and one 303 on the turret, and it is eight 20-pound bombs. Um, so I'm wondering if these are dropped all at the same time, or if they're in two sets of four, or if you can drop uh, you know, them individually. Eight 20-pound bombs means that you're only going to be dropping 160 pounds worth of damage. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be doing less than half the overall damage that the school, the regular school will be doing. Um, but you can just tell it's going to be less overall out damage output. So here we get a brief glimpse of the actual paint scheme. Oh, it looks like we can actually get it. No, never mind. That's not a brief glimpse. Um, it does look exactly like the school mark one in the, um, it's available in the, the tech tree, you know, with the shorter shorter engine compartment. This might be the special paint that's going to be available for it. Uh, thank you, Kitty Cat. I'm sure they all want to hear you. Uh, so as far as the engine is concerned, again, you know, we're looking here at the 825 um, horsepower Mercury 9. You've got your standard SCUA Mark 1, which we've already seen. The 303 cannons do 23 damage per second. Uh, the rear cannon does 20 damage per second. And the bombs themselves uh, do 400 damage each. So you multiply that by 8, and you have 3,200 damage that you're able to do with your bombs spread out in some sort of configuration. I just don't know what that configuration would be yet. So taking a look at that and comparing it to what we've got here. So we've got the Pegasus 12 engine. So it's double the freaking power, it looks like. What the flip? Um... Okay, our cannons do, excuse me, machine guns do instead of 23 damage per second, they do 25 damage per second, so slightly more. The rear turret, instead of doing 20 damage per second, does 24 damage. You know, you might say, well, what's 2 damage per second, or 8 damage per second, since there's going to be 4 of them. Um, you know, and what's 4 damage per second on the rear? I mean, it's just, it's a total of 12 damage per second that... Um, that you have well it's tier three 12 damage a second actually adds up pretty quickly when the enemy aircraft you know have a hundred hit points um so that is, that will be noticeable i think and last but not least here we've got the bomb which instead of doing 3200 damage does an additional 1100 damage right and so you've got 4300 damage so overall the the premium planes damage output is definitely less and I suspect, uh, although uh, as good as I like the Skua Mark II here that we're looking at, and, and as good of a foundation as I think the Mark I will be, it just comes across as it's going to be um, outclassed, right? Yeah, it's going to get a little bit better altitude performance. Um, is that really going to be enough to, to justify the, the um, reduction in damage output both in a air-to-air -air capabilities or in a air-to-ground capacity i'm not sure we'll see i'm gonna earn it we're gonna find out i'll post a video on it and um yeah we'll see i don't mind that wargaming is doing you know lower tier premiums right uh what well, they had the potes out uh, a while back um a fun if not stable platform um but it's nice that not everything's tier seven, eight, nine, uh, you know, 30 day grind to get a premium plane kind of situation. This, I suspect I honestly could probably get this plane in a day if I put my mind to it. And um, hopefully it's just, I just want it to be fun plane. When the Mark one comes out, I just hope it's a fun plane and that allows us to just have some fun down at tier three from time to time, right? Anyway, I hope uh, this gave some clarity on what we're getting ourselves into here. Um, I Again, I, I can't reiterate this enough. I really enjoyed the Skua. Um, I kept this plane even back in the day when I didn't have room to keep extra planes. I just enjoyed it. I don't play it all that often because I just don't go down to Tier 3. Um, but 
Um, I did really enjoy it when I did the grind, and um, it was a keeper in my opinion. So looking forward to at least testing out the premium school. I hope this was helpful. If you've got any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out in the comments or hop in the Discord link, which is down below. I'm always available there, as, as is my community. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.